¿Imaginaste que todo este inicio fuese a llevar a las Spice Gear hasta donde llegaron? ¿Lo imaginaste por un segundo o nunca pasó por la cabeza? Well, I tell you one thing that we knew as five girls that didn't really do much with their professional life, we knew together we were very, very strong and powerful. Because we were all so different. We all looked completely different. We all sang different. We all dressed differently. But as a group, we knew that we were gonna make, pe gonna make people look. And our message, we all had very strong leadership and very strong for women that were young because we all grew up with Nina Cherry or Tracy Chapman. So, so we knew we needed to bring an influence to people that was missing. It was all boy groups and we were like, what the heck? Yeah, boy groups are cute, but, but what about the girls? The girls want to look at other girls and feel empowered. So yeah, we knew that together we had something different. And we were very, very, very driven. We didn't have a day off in probably five years, not even on Christmas day. We worked and worked and worked because we believed in each other and what we were portraying for all the young women out there. If you wanna be my lover, you gotta get with my friends. You gotta, you gotta, you wait, wait a minute, wait no, a minute. We, no, you gotta, it's only me. Yeah, it's you only me. my lover, you gotta, you, you gotta. gotta. If you wanna be my lover. Qué tan doloroso fue acabar con ese sueño y de pronto un día desintegrarlo. ¿Qué tanto dolor real se sintió o no hubo dolor? In reality, the Spice Girls never broke up. What happened is, everybody deals with fame differently and pressure differently. So, for example, our first, like, if you want to call it break or pause was when Jerry left the group. Jerry Halliwell, otherwise known as Ginger Spice, has announced she's left the Spice Girls. And, and she'll talk about this in any interview. She had so much pressure all of a sudden from being famous and people weren't taking pictures. She started having a really bad eating disorder. And when you have an eating disorder, it takes over your life and your everything. And so because of that, she just needed to get away, take a minute and go, go and heal herself and make herself feel better. So that was the first time we had a bit of a, oh my God, and she left on my birthday. Thanks for coming along, it's really nice to see you all, but um, are we not missing somebody? We yeah. are, unfortunately, Jerry's not very well tonight, so get well soon, Jerry. But then what happened is, we all had kids, well, not all of us, some of us had kids, and then some of us got married, so we just wanted to relax. You know, I did, Wembley Arena when I was seven months pregnant with my first baby. After I had that baby and I got married, I wanted to take a year to enjoy my kids. Victoria did the same because we both had babies at, at, the, at the same time. Now what happens is the media go, they hate each other, they split, they're falling out. No, 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 no. We just took a break. And we've known each other for 15 years. So we all, well, not all of us, some of us have known each other 15 years, some 12 years. And it shows how strong our friendship is because after all this time, we came out in 96 and we reunited last year. So our friendship's good. Please welcome, in person for the first time together in nine years since Ginger did a bunk in Oslo, posh, ginger, sporty, baby, scary, the one and only Spice Girl. ¿Cuál de las otras Spice Girl era, era tu preferida? Sigue siendo tu preferida. You know what? But, um, they were all my best friends, okay? And, you know, if I wanted to cry and eat hot dogs, I'd go to Emma. If I wanted to talk business and make an outfit, I would go to Victoria. If I wanted to work out, I'd go to Mel C. If I wanted crazy fun party time, I would go to Jerry. So more often than not, I'd want to do crazy fun party time. <laughs> but they were all there for something different. We all had very close relationships, but different relationships with each other. And that's why you could, you could sit as, even to this day, all five of us could sit here and you could ask us a question and we would all answer it at once because we all know what we're, what we're good at answering. We all know our place and it, we're like a jigsaw puzzle, we just all fit.
¿Cuál ha sido el pago, pequeño o grande, que más felicidad te ha producido? Yeah, my first big check. We all got brought into Simon Fuller's office and he gave us all a check and we all looked at each other and opened it up and then looked at the check and we screamed. <laughs> it was like for 400,000 pounds, which is a lot of money. The first thing I did is I paid off all my mum's debt, all my dad's debt, bought my mum and dad a, a, a car, bought my sister a house. I gave it all to my family. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, this is just too much, it's too much. <laughs> ¿Qué tanto te identificas con la palabra spice? Yeah, because in the spice name you can take it how you want well we're all five spicy individuals they used to say that one was paprika one was cinnamon you know we all had our own little funny names it's very relatable to me because i think life is you can make life as spicy as you want it to be and spicy gives you something that you remember it's like oh tu primera autobiografía le pusiste por nombre toma un fuego por qué One thing about me is that I've been keeping a diary since I was 10 years old. Like every day or every other day, but I've always kept that. Even when I was, even touring with the Spice Girls, I'd make them all write their thoughts and feelings. Like I just, I love noting things down, like when it happened, what time it was, where I was, what I was thinking. Even if it was just something silly, like, oh, woke up today happy. I would have to write it down. So a friend of mine who's a writer said, because I've got like... 30 big diary books from way back. She said, why don't you write an autobiography? It's, all, it's already there, the whole, all your material's there. It's just a case of sorting out what stories you put in it. So it took me about two and a half, three weeks to actually write it because it was written. ¿Qué personaje te ha impresionado o te impresionó conocerlo personalmente? Nelson Mandela was just the icing on the cake for me. We flew to South Africa and then we met Nelson Mandela. Uh, it's one of uh, the great, greatest moments in my life. Hey. Well, you must realize, of course, uh, that uh, they are talking about an old man. You're not old. You know, you're as young as the girl you feel, and I'm 25. <laughs> But then, you know, I've met Madonna, and her work ethic is just impeccable, and she manages to do that and have a very close-knit family. You know, this, I could meet somebody on the street and he or she would inspire me. The woman who did my manicure pedicure here in Cartagena at the spa, which by the way is a gorgeous spa, I sat and I spoke to her and she has a three-year-old and a nine-year-old and she's raising them morally with that good heart and she works 18, 19 hours a day and is happy. You can be the biggest person, richest, wealthiest person, the most famous person, the most powerful person, but if you don't have heart and integrity, You're nothing. ¿Qué pasó por tu cabeza el día que murió Michael Jackson? Well, I was actually in the pool with my kids and I got a text message off, off my friend and I thought it was a joke. I said, yeah, right, that's, don't lie like that, that's not very nice. Anyway, my husband went on the internet and it happened just to be everywhere all at once. And it made me so sad because I've met Michael Jackson many times and his last charity, my sister actually hosted for him and he was standing at the side with my sister. I mean, he's a very sweet guy. And what made me sad is that, yeah, this is one guy who's surrounded by a ton of people and nobody's helping him. Nobody's looking after him. Nobody's making sure he's okay. That's what's sad, and I know, I know that that death could have been prevented if somebody would have just looked after him or helped him look after himself. Yeah. El mío personal, defecto de las otras personas que no perdono es la injusticia. No la perdono. ¿Cuál es el defecto de los seres que tú no perdonas? I don't like when, um, for example, my first time in experiencing when somebody was looking down on me because they thought that I didn't have money. I went on my first holiday, and I think I was with Jerry, and I walked into the shop. It was, she was almost, she was racist, and she just didn't like the way that I looked. She was definitely racist, <laughs> for sure. I walked in there, and she almost closed the door and shooed me out. And you know what I did? She thought that I, I, I had no money. So you know what I did? I bought 30 purses from her. 
and I paid it in cash and I went, there you go. Never judge a book by its cover. Just because I look like I don't have money, and at the time I did and I still do, she was judging me. So I don't, don't, don't like it when racism comes to play by the colour of your skin, you're going to act different to me. And just because you think I look like I don't have money, you're going to act rude to me. To judge somebody is, is one, of the, one, of the, one of the worst things.